Amen, amen. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. I want you, if you don't have it, amen, you can even look at the boards up front. But we're going to read this in unison, amen? Ready? Begin. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy path. Father, the altar is yours. The building is yours. The seat is yours. All souls are yours, Father. Do according to your will and what's in your heart this day. Speak, Holy Spirit, to us that we may hear what the Father is saying to the church this morning. In Jesus' name and the people of God say amen. Please, amen and amen. Please be seated. Amen, amen, amen. The, I, I, this is the, you know, I think the Lord is releasing me from this series that I've been teaching. Amen. Concerning... Um, fight for the family. I'm surprised I'm getting an early release because I was for sure that this thing was going to run on into November and maybe even a little bit of December, but the Father has given me a release, amen, so I think this might be it for now. But I'm telling you, the Lord has a lot in building these families back. If you missed the first three series, uh, we do have them uh, uh, on audio, so you can get them uh, as, we, as we prepare to leave, but we def- dealt with three different sessions of um, of how things, uh, common things are violated within the relationship, which causes uh, 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 trust issues within that relationship, and how, uh, um, and we saw trust from a different issue, and not just like, you know, I don't trust you kind of a thing, but we begin to see then what's, what's the building blocks behind this whole thing, so now, and the Lord has really blessed us in the last three uh, session. This is the fourth one, amen. So if you're on the tail end of something, and you're trying to see where, where everything lined up, amen, please avail yourself at, uh, to the back after service and you can get the last three that we've done. Also, uh, we have a YouTube page where we post uh, much of that audio that's there. I think those feeds uh, may already be posted or we got, not last week's was posted, but the first two weeks are already posted there. You can click on while you're at your job and Still hear the message without getting in trouble. You know how you slide away, hear the word a little bit when you're at work or a praise song or something. Amen. You can kind of feed it on in and hear what you need to hear. Amen. Amen. But today we're coming from uh, verse number six, uh, the end of that verse where it says, and he shall direct thy path. Last week we dealt with acknowledgement. Man, because all of us, you know, are in in areas where we need to acknowledge some. Sometimes there's times when things are in our court, in our specific uh, uh, areas. But if we never acknowledge that that thing is there, and then acknowledge what God has given us to overcome that thing that is there, then we still have a problem within ourselves. It doesn't make me a problem because people will often tell you you're a problem. Well, it's what's in you that makes that problem really stand out. And if we can get what's out of us, amen, and move into what God has given us, then we won't be seen as the problem. Because God, when God was creating us, he wasn't it wasn't even a part of his mind that he was creating a problem. It wasn't until something else got into us that, that we were then seen as a problem. You understand what I'm saying? He didn't say, well, I'm going to make two problems. I'm going to make man, he's going to be a problem. Then I'm going to make woman, and she's going to be a problem as well. And with the two problems together, it's just going to be warfare that goes on in the house. That's not what he was thinking about. Tell somebody that's not even what he was thinking about. (laughs) Amen. And the world will try to tell you, though, that, you know, that you, 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 because they can't really see the problem as well. So all they know is you by name or you by face. So everything is you, 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 when sometimes the problem is those that keep going you because they've outsourced their own problem. It's everybody else at fault. (laughs) Everybody else has a problem in the building other than me. I'm the only level-headed one in the building. Everybody else has a problem. Are you hearing me? (laughs) He said, I'm not buying that. (laughs) That's not working with me right there. Amen. See, that's what I mean by acknowledgement. We got to acknowledge something. Sometimes I, I can be a problem because I've allowed a problem to be in me. But I, I'm not, I don't stand for that because that's not what, you know, I don't believe that was on the heart of God when he was making me, that I should live the life as a problem. 
how I'm going to win souls if I'm just going to live the life of a problem? How am I going to have a, a good relationship if I'm just going to be a problem in the relationship? How am I going to lead children if I'm a problem and I'm, 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 you know how in our children we repeat a process of ourselves in them trying to find, trying to get out all the bad stuff that was in us, you know. We try to repeat all the good things. But if I'm just the problem and I'm now trying to repeat in them all the good things, the only good thing I had working for me was that I was a problem. Oh, boy, y'all not preaching with me this morning, but that's okay. Do I give the disclaimer right now? We preach the word, the whole word, and nothing but the word. It comes as uncut as it get. Amen. We don't shame it. We don't hide it. We don't discourage it or anything like that. But we promote the gospel as it is because we believe that finally somebody telling you the truth can help you change your life. Amen. Amen. Praise God that the disclaimer had power right there. So you got to work with me this morning. Amen? Amen. He shall direct thy paths. So we see here in Scripture, first of all, we see the word direct, root word we see. It, it, it definitely is the root word of the word we know a lot of time called direction. So first when we see direction, it's where, it's where someone is, it, it, is beginning to alter or change or provide a, a way for a specific a, a, a thing or person or whatever it may be, but they're the ones that has a solution to the way. So they give, they direct you or give you a course of direction so that the way that I started out will be influenced by what they are giving me. But a lot of times we find in church and in households and in jobs and in subways and train stations, and on buses, we find that people have an inability to have directions or follow directions. And, and I like, don't get me wrong, when I'm preaching, I'm not preaching you down because a lot of times I'm in there with it as I'm preaching it. So I'm getting, you know, <laughs> slapped around right along with it as I'm preaching it because God has something in the message for me as well. Minute, we'll walk up to a door and the door say push, but we'll just, <laughs> you follow me. Signs say, no U-turn. <laughs> and we even make it dangerous for everybody by speeding up in the U-turn so I don't get caught. <laughs> Tell somebody that's an inability <laughs> to follow directions. It's not that I didn't know the directions. <laughs> it's not that I didn't understand the director. Because somebody got paid to make that sign for you. <laughs> but instead, I, 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 I made what I felt like was an appropriate decision based upon what I thought I knew. And what I felt like the risks that were involved uh, would not pertain to me. Oh, I'm setting you up quite well, better than I thought I was. <laughs> wow. But watch this. Two things always happen when a person is in that inability to be directed or to follow directions. The first one, and I find this quite common because people have a hard time with this. And when I say people, I'm people as well. I have a hard time with this sometimes. And sometimes people don't like the way direction is packaged. You don't like the form that it's coming in. Well, let me go ahead and make it plain. Sometimes you don't like the director. A little bit more. Sometimes you can't stand the director, the one who's given the directions. Because in you, you believe that either you, 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 you know, you could do a better job at it. You know, you've done the comparison test. And then you've, you've lost a bit of faith in them because you really, you, 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 you know how you kind of know when they don't know what they're talking about? <laughs> 
I think I'm driving you too fast. That must be what it is. I'm going too fast with it. Isn't it? Let, me, let me slow the academic portion of this down a little bit for you. Because I need you to grab this. <laughs> you sized up the situation. And you believe that there is a better course of action than what's being put out. Huh? You believe that you can do better than what's being served to you. But watch this. Let me give you something that will help you break that bounds. When you begin to see those things like that, it's not that something's all time wrong with that person. Many times we don't realize how much we've grown. So we're still sizing up situations from an elementary standpoint when really we've graduated. So instead of praising God that I've graduated beyond what that person is currently talking about and praising God that they're going to graduate from where they're currently talking about, we instead want to give them the mush. We want to give them the suppression value and the depression value and the regression values. Because we miss one concept. that says, because that is the person for the moment, regardless of what I think, what they have said is still empowered, regardless of how I feel about it. Even if what they've said is wrong, it still came out empowered because they're the one in the seat. Oh, y'all don't like this, do you? Because it is, it is God who setteth up one and brings down a. Promotions don't come from beneath. They come from. So. I defer to believe that that person is there because God wants me to know how much I've grown. And sometimes we can't handle our own growth. We want to then go be bully and beat up the little man. Oh, now, I'm going to tell them a thing or two. Wait till tomorrow morning. I'm going to let them know how I feel about the whole thing. What you're about to do is messed up where your destiny is headed. Because up until that point to where you begin to, you know, think you want to capsize the moment, up until that point, you were highly favored. Most of us were highly, or is still, well, let me give you the, the, the difference, okay? Most, all of us are highly favored on our jobs or wherever we hang, in our households, whatever it may be. That's my giving, amen? So because of this, it's until I begin to mess up a moment that everything concerning how and when and how far I was going in my highly favored moment, how far it was going to take me down destiny's lane was predicated upon how well I do concerning who's in the seat. Because why would God put me in the seat if I can't even respect who's in the seat for the moment? Woo, Jesus. Help me here. Why would God clean up my marriage if I can't respect who's in the seat? And for those that have even put it on hold, why would he give me a new one if I still can't respect who's currently in the seat? I gave the disclaimer. What to God be the glory. Y'all go in with me. Trust me. I'll bring you back out before we leave. Amen. Amen. Stay with me. So till I begin to respect this thing. But what if I don't know how to? Then that's what I'm talking about this week. He shall direct thy path. 
So path, paths are indicative that they need to be directed. And I don't just wonder, because see, if you find any path without direction leads to wondering. Now we can understand why the children of Israel wandered in the wilderness. God had taken out direction and put them in the wilderness. You follow me? Who was preaching in the wilderness? Who was teaching? They were just in the wilderness. Think about it. Until it was time to come out, they was just, just wondering. And much of our life, seven, eight, ten years, 15, 20 years of marriage, 10, 20 years on the job, 25 years of raising kids, and much of it have just been Anytime you wonder, you become scenario-based. Which means that whatever come about, I'll just become reactive to it. Not even having the knowledge or understanding concerning it. I'll just be reactive. Whatever come about, I'll just throw some out. And God forbid, I'll just ask the person that just failed at it. Which is what we do many times. We'll find the person that failed at it. Help me, Holy Ghost. <laughs> if they have just divorced, they can't tell you how to keep your marriage. Because apparently they failed at it. They don't, they, they don't have the way for you, the way of direction for you, if they failed at it. Now, if they, they went through a tough time and overcome, which is biblical proportions, I, I overcome these things. And, and because we have overcome, as 1 first, first Corinthians 15, 57 says, he has made us overcomers of these things because of this. Now, that's biblical proportions. I can listen to you. And maybe I can find something along the, that'll give me direction. Oh, so first, we, we don't like the direct door. We can't handle the packaging, you know. A wood lock like that, that whole thing. You know, it, it's like this here. Everybody remember when Twinkies went out of business? How many of y'all still mad about that? You know what I mean? I would love to talk to a Twinkie CEO. I mean, I mean, the sponge cake, that was my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, but, but then they got this other thing out there, but it's in the wrong package. And I just can't make myself think of it as a Twinkie. Now, I done broke it down bare right here. Y'all got to help me through this. This is the lowest I can get with it right there. But when I go through the store, I'm still looking. <laughs> now, I see stuff that look like and. Oh, the same color, same icing. Lord, help me through here. I got to be delivered from Twinkies. <laughs> What's my sister say? Preach. <laughs> but it's in the wrong wrapper. If they had at least put it in a Twinkie wrapper, they could have at least tricked me or something. But my direction is all messed up along the path in the commissary because I get to that spot right there where they used to be. And it's got a different package. So my direction is kind of skewed a little bit now. I have to make myself, <laughs> you know, begin to like what's in the new package. Now, I said all this so you can understand what's going on with you in a lot of cases. I begin to see that that rapper messed with some things in me 
that I had not concluded on yet. In other words, there was unfinished business that was still in me concerning that Twinkie. And a lot of us have that unfinished business that's still going on in you. Therefore, every time God sends you a new director to give you direction concerning the path, you have a hard time receiving them. And you're still trying to call back to the old church or the old place trying to get direction. He's trying to tell you, no, that direction was for when you were there. I've placed you right where you get new direction because you have new wars and new fights and new battles and new things that are coming against you. And the only way to be able to fight them, there has to be a director that them been through some stuff. So I had to give you somebody else that's proven. Because it's been kind of hard for you to get church 3,000 miles away. Been kind of hard. The sermon ain't quite the same as I felt it when I was there. The message not quite as empowered as I felt it when I was there. But then that day I went to Love City and oh, it just blew some stuff all out the way. And, and now, oh Lord, I don't know how to juggle it now. Now I'm picking up again what I once felt. Where I once met God, where I first believed God has provided a table for me right here in Germany. Amen. But I didn't like the package, I didn't like the director. Now the next one is, <laughs> we don't like the direction. Because in the absence of direction, many of us uh, uh, move to sh what's called shortcuts. Don't worry, we're going to go back to the word in a minute. I just got to get you totally in boxed in with this. In the absence of clear directions, we're quick to take a shortcut because it becomes demanding to us, and we don't want to be involved with it for too long. No, no. And, 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 but how many know that every time you take a shortcut, you end up just what it says, you end up cut short? That's the old road trip syndrome right there. I told him to keep straight, but then he going to turn, talking about he know a shortcut. Three hours later, when we could have been there in 15 minutes, and the, I know I'm out here by myself. I'm trying to tell you, I've been through some stuff. I'm just trying to help you here. <laughs> and that shortcut turned into three hours. Tell him I done been here before. <laughs> well, they done changed the roads. <laughs> My fault they changed the roads on me. What happened? Well, I thought that I could get us there quicker. And then, but she kept on talking. And then, next thing you know, we were late. We got there after the event. You know, maybe we catch it next year. But it's, it's no big thing. It's no big thing. It is a big thing. <laughs> because in the absence of direction, we'll shoot for those shortcuts. Which is why you find a lot of time in a relationship, before you go to the store, if you have a hard time going to the store, you get some clear directions. You, you get it by mouth. You get it by paper. You get a text to you as you're going down the aisle. Oh, I must be right in there. Huh? Let me text him because he ain't going to get it. I know he ain't going to get it. Let me go ahead and send it to him again. Put exclamation points on it because he's just not going to. He's not going to. <laughs> if he get it, he ain't going to get it right. Got to be this one, not that one. Uh, yeah, can't be Betty Croc. Got to be Aunt Jemima. Can't be Betty Croc. It got to be this one here because it don't do the same thing as the other one. They look the same. They not in the same package. So they don't do the same thing. <laughs> Am I helping? It's in the absence of direction. But what's wrong with direction? A lot of times we can't receive direction because it works against our own intellect of what we think is right or wrong. So anything outside of that, 
we place a devaluing state on it because I can't get with it right now. It becomes limited even as it's coming into us. We put up blockers and bracers so, so you'll never receive all of it anyway. And then the end of the conversation goes, well, I thought you said something about, no, I didn't say nothing about that at all. That wasn't even part of the conversation. That's the portion that was blocking what I was actually saying to you. So because it was filtered going in, you never got all of it. Therefore, you took a shortcut and came up cut short. Oh, help me down through here. Let's see some word here. You ever see some word? See, normally I've been bombarded you with a whole lot of word right about now. But I needed to plant something in you. What is the path? What's in the path providing uh, this direction? Look at Psalms chapter 19 and verse number uh, 105. Psalms chapter 19, verse 105. You there? So Psalms 119, 105. 119, 105. Psalms 119 and 105. 119 and 105. We're there. It says, thy word. Y'all ready for me? Read with me. Thy word is. So no matter when I read it, is it still is. Whatever generation want to read it, it still is. It's not my word was, but it is, is, is. Amen? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my... So first I need to be able to see where I'm going. This is a, a key relationship problem because we're male and female. Much of how we see is differentiated about our, our lifestyles and, 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 and our, 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 our physical beings. You know, man, woman, male, female. It becomes clouded to us because as a woman, you see as a woman. As a man, you see as a man see it. Meaning that we need some joining point so when the light come on, what you see and what I see should be joined somewhere. And one reason it's not joined is because it could be that maybe somebody didn't leave and then cleave. It could not be joined because maybe somebody was, was married at heart and somebody was married in anatomical proportions. Physical proportions. Anatomy. You follow me? So we end up with these kind of delusions within the marriage because one is married because you're so fine and the other one is married because you're so sensitive. Are you hearing me? Two different things. And I'm not saying who see which way because a lot of times it, it can be both ways. You know? Yeah, at one point you... you you know, when he came about or she came about, you were glistening in somehow. <laughs> like somebody walked by and just, you just glistening. Did something to you. You see what I'm getting at? So we don't know who's who. But at the same time, now that I'm in this thing, somewhere we got to come together. And the only way for me to come together is what's the first two words? Thy word. It has to be a lamp unto it just so you can see which way even, just, just where to put my feet and not to step in the same damaging holes time after time after time again. Because a lot of us, if you're like me, I was a repeat offender in damaging stuff. Just tying up the relationship, damaging everything that came about. Then damaged all the money, then damaged all the words that could have healed the whole situation, then damaged all the physicality of things, then damaged everything. Just messed up stuff. Are you hearing me? I needed to know where to place my feet. It's not that God had set up for me to even have the land, which he had, but it's that I didn't know where to put my feet. 
So I needed what? Thy word. Lamp unto my feet. And a light unto my path. That's my destiny. That's where I'm going. And a lot of us, that that whole destiny thing, that lamp been turned off for a long time. And you just became confident in just having a job. You just became confident in just getting your children through school. Getting my children through school is another start point for me. They, I've already been telling them, don't get mad with us, but things take off. I'm telling you, they go high up right after you graduate. <laughs> that's, the, that's the next level for us. We move up. We don't go in a little cloudy, cramped up hole, and that's it for us, and woe is me. Oh, no, we're going to step right out of the ship and start walking. If I sink, Jesus help me, I get them right back up and move, take me right back to where I need to be. But I'm going to reach my destiny. Because God didn't have failure in mind when he was making me. And if I don't have this lamp and this light, I end up with a whole lot of unfinished business. <laughs> Let's look at the next one here. Proverbs chapter 11. Verse number 5. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 5. The righteousness of the perfect shall direct his way. But the wicked shall, by what? His own wickedness. So when I fall, it ain't everybody else's problem. Everybody else's fault, I mean. If I don't make it to where I'm going, it's not everybody else's fault. Well, it pretty much gave us a, de a, a, you know, a declarative statement there. But the wicked shall fall by his own wickedness. Now, wicked is not like a shirt you put on that you just take off. <laughs> it's not. Wickedness is an interworking. It's something that's working inside of you. That's what wickedness is. Which means that you can play the role on the outside, but inside something's really shadowing you. Something's really destroying you. Something's really bothering you. And that's why now I'm having problems over here at point A because I'm not letting go of what's really bothering me over here. So now I'm doing little wicked things with my little wicked self. So then the whole house become a house of wickedness. And I'm trying to turn other people to be filled with wickedness. So it just be a complete wicked drama going on. And then I go turn on the Bluetooth and watch wickedness. And then try the wickedness that they're doing in my relationship, in my affairs, and different things that concern me. Now I got a bigger problem because I got another dose of wickedness. I got wickedness X2. Exponent of two. Are you hearing me? But we're trying this crazy stuff. We're doing these crazy things because we really don't want to hear thy word. So what we start doing? We start outsourcing this and outsourcing that. Go find it somewhere else in this thing right here. And then we end up with a life of incomplete things. Some of us Started college. Haven't finished. That's the curveball. Got real quiet right there. Some of us started a, a, a business. But never completed. We, we started it even in our vision. You had already seen yourself successful in that business. In doing that thing. And you're an expert at it. complete because I did not have direction to my path I didn't know how to get there I thought my own intuitive judgment was going to get me there I thought my own clinical studies was going to get me there I thought my collegiate studies were going to get me there I thought the person that lived beside me who don't have their own was going to get me there so I was searching in, 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 in dark places for a lamp
It's dark because there ain't no lamp on. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You need that word to be that lead and that guide for you. So those things that, see, some of us have even put our relationship on these patterns. And say, you know what? In three years, we're going to be here. If that's my projection. And then five years, we're going to be here. Kids graduating, we're going to be here. And then this, and I'm going to start this. We're going to be here. Some of us have tried to run that down up here in our minds. And it's incomplete. It's not even on the pattern to be completed. You've totally put it on the shelf and plan on going back to it one day if you ever get direction. Tell somebody I need his direction. Oh, man. Are y'all getting this? Exodus chapter 13. Exodus chapter 13. Let's look at verse, I think, verse 15. Verse 17. Exodus chapter 13. We'll start reading at verse number 13. Am I doing all right? Exodus chapter 13. We'll start reading at verse number 17. It says, and it came to pass when Pharaoh had let the people go, that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was near. For God said, lest peradventure the people repent when they see war and they return to Egypt. Now, let, now let, me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me just set the scenario here for a minute. Everybody knows the story where Pharaoh had the people, and they was all on lockdown. He wouldn't let the people go. Moses had to go up and tell him, hey, God said, let the people go. He told him, went on about three times, said, the, father, the Lord said, let my people go. And finally, Pharaoh let the people go. But look at this. They had been in there for so long, for such a long time. They had been there. And God said, let my people go. So now, as Pharaoh is letting the people go, they began, God knows that they were, were uh, going to begin to do what they were used to doing as if though they were going to be successful in doing the same thing again. And God said, well, if I let them go, they'll come up and see battle and then they'll run back into Egypt because I haven't put direction back in yet. The only thing I did is send a director in Moses saying, Pharaoh, let the people go. So finally, Pharaoh heard the director and then let the people go. But now they don't have direction yet. So God said, what are they going to do? They're going to become repeat offenders of the same old stuff. They're going to do the same thing again and again and again and again. They're going to mess up again. They're going to backbite again. They, they're going to they're gonna use the wrong language again. They're going to cheat again. They're going to uh, uh, do this again, that again. They're going to mess up the house again. They're going to spend all the money again. It kept going and going. He said, no, they're going to repeat this same issue. Watch this. Because it's easy for me to take them out of the bondage and not get the bondage out of them. It's easy for me to move locations, the same problem they had, the reason they were in the location. But if I don't ever get the problem out of them, if they never understand that I am the director and they receive direction, they're going to leave with the same problem and they're still going to be in bondage. They're going to be a walking bondage. And they're going to carry around the same stuff over and over again. And I know you know some of these people. Every time you meet them, hey, how you doing? They got that same sad story. But I thought that was 10 years ago. And it's the same story. 
yeah, the reason why I'm like that is because it was 10 years ago and I was still, no, you should be, you should be somewhere delivered from that by now. Why is this, why are you living the same story? And as long as you live the story, it has life. It can, don't get me wrong. I'm not belittling a bad situation. It, it can be a very terrible situation with a very terrible conclusion. But as long as you live it, it breathes. It talks. It speaks on your behalf. When you really want to say what you really want to say, it's talking. And that explains why we have trouble getting our language in order sometimes. Getting our feelings in order sometimes. Some of us are absent of feelings. So we're just hard. Everything is just hard. Everything is a slap in the face. It's because I'm still living a, what should be now a dead issue. But I've given it life because I haven't received in a new direction concerning it. And except God give you direction, there's no other way for you to be delivered from it. Which is why he said, I have to direct your path. Because if not, you'll just repeat the same thing over and over. Because that's the nature of man, to become repetitive. Because he don't want to be influenced by any new information. And God will send you the perfect person. Here's someone that can make you better and get you to where you need to be. But by the time they get to you, she thinks she know my job. <laughs> oh, dear, he come here trying to tell me what to do. I've been doing it for 25 years. Don't tell me what to do. Shop just ate up from the floor up. Stuff everywhere. Still can't find some stuff. Are you hearing me? Whoa. Me back out of there. <laughs> but that's the way it is. God said, Well, let me send you somebody. You've been praying, but I can't stand because the package they came in. They come in, they all sharp, and you know, they come in with their degrees and things and trying to tell me what to do. And I said, Well, I sent you some help. They didn't come to overtake you, they came so that you could be an overcomer. Because you've been there so long, you're stuck at what you're doing. So you bring nothing new to the table right now. Now tell me that doesn't mimic a lot of our relationships. By that seven-year point, nothing new is coming to the table. Huh? You know, morning, breakfast, go to work. Come back from work, eat in the evening, watch a movie, lay down, get in the bed, do your thing. Next morning, breakfast. It's over with. Nothing new. And you've been living like that some of your seven to ten years. Nothing new in the relationship. Because you're stuck. And you really need direction. How do I get my relationship from here to there? Thy word shall be a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. You have to put your relationship on your destiny trail. We'll put everything else on destiny except our relationship. Many of us. Many of us. You'll fill out a whole calendar and the family not even on it. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. See, if I don't jump right there, y'all will get set and stuck right there. I need you to come out. Nothing new on it. You don't remember the last time it was just a good outing. Nobody's birthday. Nobody's, you know, nobody just coming out the hospital. Nobody just got off the airplane. Just commune and have a good day. Because I've gotten stuck in what I believe is going to be the all, get all, and fix all. I have been in an inability to receive direction. Therefore, now there's nothing new. Anytime you find a place where there is nothing new, 
coming on the scene. Prepare for rust and bugs and the, bu the little bugs that eat it away, birds to grab it and take it away. Prepare for all those things to set in on that product, whatever it may be. You can take a brand new car and sit it just in one place and never even move it. By the time you look at it 10 years from now, it's going to be a hot mess. Because nothing new was brought to it. Nothing new. Even if you go back and try to wash it, you find rough spots here, grass done grew up in the, in the, in the, in the engine, and the seats done cracked and split because of the sun. And it's just sit there wasting away, and that's what happened in our relationship. If you bring nothing new, it, it just wastes away. And then by the time you, 10 years later, you look at all the corrosion and stuff, you don't even like the person you're living with. You want to keep the relationship together because I don't want nobody to know I'm getting a divorce and I don't want my kids to be upset about the divorce and stuff like that. But the truth of the matter is it has rusted away and I don't like the looks of what it's going on. So you, in your mind you're saying, you know, I really can't stand you. I love you, but I can't stand you. I'm sure when they bought that vehicle 10 years ago, they, they loved it. I 10 years later, they couldn't stand it. Belts and stuff popping off down there, engine overheating. And, you know, the hood won't stay closed. Every time you take a left, the door fly open. <laughs> and you get out the car and slam the door like it's going to happen. And that's what we do. We become aggressive with it because we think that's going to keep that door shut. But I slammed it ten times before now. And the door still fling open when you take the left. It's time to bring something new. But God told him, he said, don't, don't go that way because you're used to going that way. If you go that way, it's going to put you right back where you were. And, and, and look what it says here in Scripture. It says here, let's look at why they were going to go that way. And it came to pass when Pharaoh let the people go that God led them not through the way of the land of the Philistines, although that was. So it was the what? It was the shortcut. They were used to the shortcut. Boy, I thank God y'all helping me preach down through here. It was the shortcut. He said, no, I'm not taking y'all through the shortcut because that's what messed you up before. <laughs> oh, my Jesus, help me, Lord. It said, verse 18, but God led the people about through the way of the wilderness of the Red Sea. And the children of Israel went up. Harness out all the land of Egypt. Oh, you see this? Now, look at this. He said, no, I could easily take you about, about 50 miles right through there. If you look at it mathematically, you'll see what I'm talking about. He said, I could take you about 50 miles right through there, and you'll get where you're going. He said, no, you need to go and do the 120 with me. I'm going to take you by, watch this. I put you in the wilderness for a reason. You needed to be there for a reason. You weren't going to get no direction because Pharaoh wasn't there to give you any direction. The only thing you was going to get was a slavery moment. You won't get a worker bee moment, but you won't get anything that was going to help you in that type of bondage. He said, watch this. He said, but where I'm taking you to is by the way where I have put you through. You know what wilderness look like. You overcame the wilderness. You've been through that before. You've got the t-shirt about that before. You've been there. So if I take you that way, you'll know what you're going through because you've seen this before. I've given it to you before, and it's what helped change you. It's what molded you. It made you understand that, yeah, you, you know, what bondage look like. He said, but now I'm taking you the other way because you need to know that I'm the director. And with the direction that I give you, you will be able to overcome in your destiny. Because where I'm taking you is a land that's going to be flowing with the things that, 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 that fill all of your necessity, uh, 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 all of your necessities. I'm taking you to a land to where you won't want for anymore because it will already be there. I'm taking you on a destiny to where everything will be fulfilled. 
where everything about you, when you set out to do it, it shall come to pass because it's part of your destiny. You've seen the things that have stopped you before. You've experienced the hurt behind the shutdowns, the doors closing in your face. You've experienced those things before, and you know exactly what they feel like. I'm going to take you right by it so you'll remember that that's not what you want. 